Friday video. We had to do Thursday's backup video since I didn't get around to it early yesterday morning and then it got punted. But let's cut to the quick on Friday's gospel. It's a parable of the vineyard owners and how the vineyard owners basically defy uh, the, the vineyard tenants, sorry, not the owners. The tenants essentially defy the owner again and again. They beat his servants, they don't yield a harvest, they kill various messengers sent until finally the owner sends a son and then the son too gets killed by very faulty thinking. Let us, you know, kill him and the inheritance will be ours. How, how in the world is that logical? It is the dumbest, stupidest thinking in the Gospels. And I think it, our Lord illustrates with that parable how sin works. Sin so corrupts our reasoning process that it makes us stupid. But anyway, Jesus uses that parable to explain why there is a new covenant coming. And that the fruits of the old covenant are now being maximized in the new covenant, which is the church. Now, the problem with this gospel is it's often used as a springboard for being anti-Semitic. And we should never be anti-Semitic. We should have a profound love for our Jewish brothers and sisters. They are our, our, you know, our grandparents in faith. We should honor and love and respect them. Paul, St. Paul, loved his Jewish faith. And he saw Christianity as the fulfillment of it, as we should. Now, I know Jews won't see that, and... I can understand them feeling insulted by it, but this is the way we look at it. Whether you uh, like it or, or, or not, this is how a good Catholic ought to look at it. The Christianity is the fulfillment of the covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to Moses, to David, to all the prophets. And we are thankful for that. But this, this gospel... I'm sure it's been used in the past, at various ages, to be anti-Semitic. You know, punishing the Jews for crucifying Christ is as stupid as the reasoning in the Gospel. It's like, wait, Christ died for our sins. You know, the ancient Jews and Romans may have been the active agents, but every human being put Jesus to death with the exception of his mother, who was given a supernatural grace to not share an original sin. But Jesus is dying for the rest of us, for our sinfulness, for the uh, original sin from Adam and Eve, and for the personal sins we came up to this very moment. Christ is dying, suffering for all of those. And the church has a high calling. I mean, in every age, how did we forget? Pray for your enemies. For those who persecute you. The Gospels never endorse persecuting anybody. You can defend your own. You can defend yourself. Self-defense is not against the Gospel. Uh, but persecution is. I can think of nothing that goes more against the will of Christ than acting aggressively towards our neighbors. Not loving them. And that's really, you know, really the key. The first reading is the story of Joseph. And it's the story of envy. And I, I uh, when we talk about envy and faith, pardon me, this is where I probably sound like the former President Barack Obama. I hope everybody thinks their faith is the right faith. And is the fullness of faith. And if you don't think that, you should be looking for another faith. If I didn't think Catholicism was everything, I'd go to find what everything was. And that doesn't mean Catholicism is perfect in its practice. I think it's very perfect in its revelation, in its teaching. Uh, the practice is up to us, and we do it poorly. That's that great quote by G.K. Chesterton. 
You know, Christianity has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left mostly un untried. It's not an exact phrase, but it's pretty close. And, and we want to be mindful of that. We want to strive our best to be like Jesus, who forgave his persecutors on the cross and interceded for them. We should do the same and never be persecutors. God bless. Blessed Friday, come to a fish fry. Well, unless you're worried about the coronavirus, in which they stay home and be healthy.